Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, October 28th, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in. It's looking like a November to remember. The snow is going to pile up in the West, the Northeast, and all of Canada. But the big story, an X flare is headed towards Earth. An X 1.0 coming off of the sun just about 18 hours ago, right there, almost 24 hours now, 20 hours. And well, we'll get to the diagnosis. Keep calm. It's boom time. There is the X flare in question happening just at 1540 UTC or so. You can see it has a southerly direction, but it also has a halo expression, which means it's definitely coming right at us, which was direct. We're directly looking at the sun from these vantage points. The models are showing less than uh, we're looking for, and we're going to do a full analysis tomorrow morning over at Magnetic Reversal News, as well as an update on La Palma. So stay tuned for that. Now, what does it mean? Well, we're going to be going into geomagnetic storm. Here, a strong G3 geomagnetic storm watch has officially been added for the weekend. The impressive partial halo CME is predicted to sweep past Earth on Saturday. And in my opinion, may even reach us as early as Friday night. It may be responsible for an impressive auroral display throughout the weekend, all the way into the low latitudes. A spooky Halloween treat, perhaps, or a deadly debacle to the grid and communication satellites. We'll see. October 30th, they're predicting KP7 G3 geomagnetic storm, and on the 31st, reverberations at KP6 at G2 magnetic storm. Now, what does this mean for your health and safety? Well, we want to be looking at geomagnetic storm risks. And once we get above KP6 into 7, 8, and 9, we should be very worried about heart rate fluctuations, heart attacks and strokes of all kind, acute coronary syndrome, blood pressure increase, seizures, migraine risk, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, and cognitive diminution, as well as suicide risk, mental disorder flare-up, radiation risk if you're flying, and alert for diabetic patients and those with metabolic disorders. For airline passengers in high latitudes, look out. So there is a geomagnetic storm warning for October 30th, G3 geomagnetic storm getting up to KP7. It's our opinion that on October 30th, we could get as high as KP8. So we're going to keep a close eye on it, but that is our prediction. Now let's talk about some other developments. Absolute nightmare after 40 plus inches of snowfall, stranding trucks, and well, just battering people in the West. That's what the snow has done. Epic snowfall prompts Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort to open this Friday, a month earlier than expected. Shut up, Al. Get your home. Yeah, you know what Al told us back in 2006? There would be no more snow. Ho, ho, ho. When in fact, here are the snow totals for just the last 72 hours on the West Coast of the U.S. We're looking at totals well above 36 inches for a, little, a huge swath of the Sierras. And that's just the last three days. Heavy snow continuing to pummel Washington State in the high elevations. We'll get to the forecast. But you're looking at the last 72 hours on western U.S. Now, the total snow mass for the northern hemisphere, excluding the mountains, also epic. Above average for the entire data set. And it appears to be going higher. Lots more snow in the forecast. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. Pearl River. County tornado EF1 was confirmed by the National Weather Service uh, in just the last 48 hours. Lots of destruction moving through the south, the southern tier, south central. Tornado left two people injured and several homes damaged after sweeping through Lake Charles in Louisiana. Take a look at that McMansion. Just got picked apart. Well, it is made with toothpicks after all. Toothpicks aside, that half a million dollar pile of toothpicks. Well, is completely fluxed. We're still in the middle of it. Eversource says Cape Cod power outage will last for days, and it already has. Now, earlier in the event, there was about half a million people without power for about 48 hours, and that continues. We still have 204,000 people without power in Massachusetts. Only one third has gotten their power on the last 24 hours. Texas. The nexus of the Schmexis adding 116,000 to the toll, almost 
350,000 people without power across the U.S. currently, which is the lowest it's been for two days. Hey, hey. And here you can see that next bomb cyclone moving into Washington State, bringing more precipitation, flooding, and snow to the high elevations. How much snow? Ho, ho, ho. Al Gore will never tell you. Here we have the snow through Friday into Saturday morning, mostly in BC and Alberta, but there will be some heavy precipitation in northern Washington state and a spattering in the high elevations in the northern Rockies in the U.S. Through Saturday afternoon into Sunday, just moderate snow in northern Wyoming, some in Montana, northern Colorado. But here we are into Monday morning. That's when a second system is going to pick up and rip through Wyoming into Nebraska. They can kiss my... And you can see developing a little bit into the plains here in western Nebraska. You're going to be picking up some snow. This system is going to move to the northeast, bring snow into the higher elevations in New York State, potentially um, Vermont and New Hampshire there. But take a look at central Pennsylvania. Yes, it's true. November 3rd through the 5th could be a very snowy time in the Catskills, the Appalachians, and much of the northeast as the snow pattern continues through mid-November, a November to remember. It's our position that based on these patterns, we could see snow in all 50 states, including Florida, before Christmas. Large storm system for the eastern U.S. as Pacific Northwest remains wet. A large storm system will impact the eastern U.S. over the next few days. Thunderstorms are forecast for the southeast and mid-Atlantic regions through Friday. Heavy rain is likely from the mid-Atlantic through New England Friday and Saturday, which may lead to urban and renewed river flooding. The Pacific Northwest will continue with more rainfall, possible flooding, and snow in the high elevations. Come over to weather.gov and click on your county for more information in your local region. Gigantic hailstones in Australia. We reported on this when they happened a week ago. Record-breaking hailstones. This is due to increased cosmic rays. We are at the cosmic ray maximum in all of modern history. A gargantuan 6.3-inch hailstone set a new continental record in Australia. This is following the 8-plus-inch hailstone that set the South American continental record a year ago. And, well, our predictions from five years ago have come true. Record hail in the future in just a few years. And here we are a few years later, and we have record hail worldwide. And it's continuing. Like a sin, Australia storms, huge hail caused chaos in two cities. Melbourne and Canberra have been pelted by golf ball sized hail in separate storms within 24 hours, destroying crops and taking names. And here we are. A monster hailstorm has hammered the city's north, damaging cars and forcing terrified motorists off the road. Parents race to collect children early from school while heartbroken businesses are tonight counting the cost, which could exceed hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like ping pong balls falling from the sky. Oh my God, look at the size of the hail. This is one spring storm that showed no mercy. This is heard to go smash, smash, smash. Motorists on the Northern Expressway had... Smash, smash, smash. Well, that's what happens when giant hail predicted by this channel and many others, is falling from the skies and will only increase as the magnetic excursion continues. The grand solar minimum descends into the depths of 2035. Are you trying to stay alive? Well, so are we. Seismic update. No quakes of note. But with this solar activity headed our way, hey, hey, like a boom in the night. We're going to keep a close eye on what's happening in the next 48 hours, hours of powers, including uptick in volcanic activity. Why? Not because we're going up at the KP6, but because we are currently been at KP0 for 12 of the last 18 hours. And that charges the muons in the subsurface and heats that volcano activity worldwide. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Speaking of worldwide, we have Fuego, Popo, Ibu, Reventador, Sangay, La Palma, Nevado de Chilán, Nevado del Ruiz, and just 48 hours ago, and a Krakatoa, the baby of Krakatoa, well, puffed and passed, and there was some small activity, first to 1,000 feet, and then 3,000 feet, so we're keeping a close eye on the Sunda Strait. 
because that could be a, a developing problem. Now, let's quick do a La Palma update. Today's latest update following the surge of activity yesterday. The eruption has been a bit calmer today, relatively speaking. Lava fountaining and lava flow of fusion continue with impressive force at the vent. The eruption column is still rising to 3,000 meters today, but the prevailing trade winds regimen dissipates it to the southwest, which means off the island. So that's good news. Bushcraft Bear was over uh, exploring the island today on the eastern side, and there are no effects from the volcano there. It almost, just 30 miles away, doesn't look like anything's happening. The seismicity, the micro tremor, is dropping precipitously to some of the lowest levels ever. And the erroneous uplift that we saw the other day that made everyone shark their pants has dropped off the cliff and could be an error. If it's not an error, all that lava is now gone out of the upper magma chamber and the prediction that i made five days ago that this eruption is coming to an end is probably correct and the reason i say that is the longest known eruption is the 49 eruption which lasted 47 days and we're approaching that cusp and i think that this uh this volcanic eruption based on all historical eruptions is doing the same thing that it has in the historic past which means this will rapidly come to a close in just the next week or so, I will give it 10 days to end all eruptive phases. Now let's look at the earthquake activity today. A lot less than 250 plus. We're down to around 200 earthquakes at a lower magnitude. The highest magnitude in the last 24 hours is a 4.2. And if we're looking at the quakes, there has been a reduction in quakes. This was the slight uptick after a complete lull. You can see the last flurry over 48 hours is much denser than what's happened over this 48 hours. We should see a shutdown in activity similar to this again. Another pattern emerge of decreasing activity as we move forward. As in my opinion, this volcanic eruption will come to an end within 10 days. As predicted, astronomers eye giant space volcano, comet spewing cryomagma. Now this is complete lunacy. Cryomagma is a made up word which adds frozen with magma, which is an oxymoron. Magma cannot be cryo because it would no longer be magma. It would be a rock. Magma is molten rock underneath of the ground. Lava is on top of the ground. Cryomagma means frozen magma Frozen lava under the ground, which is complete. These people are idiots. And one of them I respect. That's Tony Phillips over at spaceweather.com. And what he says is that we, we really have a giant space volcano. And that might be a better description. Because what Tony Phillips fails to grasp is plasma discharge and the electrical excitement of a body, an entity in our solar system, which has an opposite charge of what's going on around it, and it flares up. Or space events moving by the object, which excite it and allow it to emanate plasma, a plasma tail. Well, anyway, it's almost like I'm teaching children, but these are the top scientists in the field using words like cryomagma, which I... <laughs> oxymoronically can't even exist. It's embarrassing, I know. Now, global food prices set to soar as the oil and gas crunch continues. Oil and gas prices have risen dramatically this year, almost uh, at $100 a barrel today. And this results of underinvestment and recovering demand, whatever that means. It means that our new president has removed our oil independence and has now relied on the rest of the world. And that's why prices have soared. So let's vote him out. Higher fuel prices are weighing on global food supply chains. As we have supply chain issues and the prices of gas are soaring to its $5 a gallon, guess what truckers aren't doing? Driving, because now diesel is at five fifty at the same time with transportation and farming costs continuing to climb. Absolutely nonsense. And you know what the answer coming from uh, our government is? <laughs> We don't have any answers. Now, the hardest hit will once again be every single one of the people listening to this podcast. Ordinary Americans that make less than a million dollars a year. Yeah, a lot less. 
<laughs> mental illness now linked with severe COVID-19 cases, according to the CDC. If you have a mental illness, you're more likely to need a tube or to freak out and die from the disease because it's not really a disease. It's a mental illness. And so if you're mentally ill and you believe you have it, you will beg to be intubated. Happy bird seeds. Colorado grown. Well, soon to be New Mexico, but happy birds fly higher. And if you use the coupon code LOVE39, you get 39% of all of their medicinal flock. Take a look. Lucid Naturals, good friend of mine that owns Hemp Lucid, the CEO, Chase and I are developing a strategy, well, to put on one of the biggest, well, let's just say, hold on to your pants because we're about to give you some of the deepest discounts on some of the most incredible medicines that will help you survive and thrive in the future. Relief that sinks in deep. Plant medicine, well, that's affordable. And better than anything coming from you know who. Another person that needs our help, and please wait for our Lucid Naturals um, commercial, so to speak. We're definitely going to be promoting this pro product over the next week or so because something big is about to happen over at Hemp Lucid. Now, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, unfortunately, good friend of the channel. You all know him. Doc Ron. He is one of the most prolific esoteric authors that we know. He's Late into his 70s, and he got the coronavirus, and he's suffering, but he's recovering well, and I just spoke to him at length the other day. He needs your help. At the same time he's recovering from coronavirus, he's also being evicted from his home where he loves and has been living for quite some time in Washington State, so much so that he has nowhere to go, and there's no one supporting his work. So he's absolutely, he's selling off every, his entire life. So come check out the store. There's a keepsake vault where you can buy stuff from his home and a bookstore where you can buy his works. Dr. Richard Allen Miller could really use our help. If you have a couple, couple dollars, come over to one of his links on his website here at richardallenmiller.com. We'll leave you links below. Check out the keepsake vault where you can buy stuff from his freaking living room. He's selling some old telescopes and art prints and other fantastic things at really good prices simply because he needs the money and he has to downsize and get out of the place. Porta Lucas, Doors of Light by Paulus Rosius, $15, dollars $250. And that certainly looks something Kabbalistic there. You can also get boomerangs and Richard Allen Miller's childhood skates for just 40 bucks. Can you believe that? So Doc Rom needs our help. He has hundreds of books, basically at cost that he's selling about medicinal uh, mushrooms and other wonderful alternative agriculture type books. Simply come over to the store and come to the bookstore. His bookstore is filled with um, actual hard copy as well as eBooks. So you can get all the eBooks. His newest book I just got, he just mailed it to me the other day, The Non-Local Mind. In a holographic universe. Amazing read, 24 bucks. It's worth it. And he's about to come out with many more books on ESPA, herbs, native plants. Yoga tronics is what we're trying to get out. So that's the future, but we need the support now over at Dr. Richard Allen Miller.com. He's in a tight squeeze. So let's give him help if you support him. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where our friends need your help. And you need help as well. And that's why we're here for you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Consider becoming a Patreon and be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it. And join us over at Magnetic Reversal News later for more updates. Nah, nah, nah.